So we have two different types of reconstruction. You have presidential reconstruction and you have congressional reconstruction, and they don't match. At first, we're looking at the presidential reconstruction. Johnson considered reconstruction more of a restoration. He wanted to bring in the former Confederate states after they had repudiated the ordinance of secession, basically saying, oh, no, well, we didn't mean to do that. That was a terrible idea. Uh, accepted the 13th Amendment, the one that got rid of slavery. Repudiated all the Confederate debt, said, sorry, people who loaned us money, we're not going to go ahead and pay that. And then, of course, pledged loyalty to the Union. This clashed with the Republican version because Johnson vetoed an extension of the Freedmen's Bureau, the bureau that was set up to help uh, freed slaves after the Civil War. He uh, vetoed the Civil Rights Bill of 1865, and this actually declared that all persons were born people born in the U.S. were citizens. That was the Civil Rights Bill of 1865. Now that is the case today because we do have something called the 14th Amendment. So that is a difference. Uh, he also ordered black families that were on land evicted from that land that the army had settled them on because during the Civil War the army just basically took people and said, okay, you guys, this is your land now, and uh, Johnson reversed that. And then he gave in to the black codes in the South, basically what we know today as uh, Jim Crow laws. Now, the congressional version was a little bit different. Republicans were appalled by the mass killings of ex-slaves and by the black codes that were in the South, at least at first. Uh, they decided to take control of the Reconstruction idea from Johnson. They deny to, uh, seats to representatives from some of the former Confederate states. Uh, they override Johnson's veto of the Civil Rights Act of 1866, because they did a second attempt. And then, just uh, because their whole citizenship thing didn't go through the way they thought, they write the 14th Amendment to the Constitution, which guarantees citizenship to anybody who is born in the United States. It also reduces the citizen, citizenship status of any southern state that denies the right to vote to certain people. And in 1870, they go even further with the 15th Amendment, which gives voting rights to black men. They then confiscate and redistribute uh, plantations to freedmen. That was actually eventually uh, defeated, though. That was an idea that they were trying, though. And then they divide the South into military districts because this was not going the way they uh, had expected. Basically, the South had returned to uh, states, in many cases, of de facto slavery, and they were overriding it. The Black Codes were running rampant. Um, gangs running around just rampantly killing black people uh, it was also a, uh, an abomination in the Republicans' eyes at the time. Now, so they divided the South into military districts. Uh, this was, again, over a veto from Johnson. Basically, it declares martial law, and it pens the adopting of constitutions that guarantee civil liberties to former slaves. They also push through the Civil Re uh, I'm sorry, the Reconstruction Act of 1867. It gives men in the South the right to vote before the 15th Amendment actually makes it uh, constitutional. Then... Um, it actually sets up two freedmen to be able to run for office. And uh, some of them start serving in state legislatures and even in the U.S. Senate. Uh, Johnson, however, is commander-in-chief of the Army, so when the South is placed under martial law, he forbids the Army to try violations of federal law in its courts. The Republicans refer to this as an effort to thwart the will of Congress and to lend aid to the enemy. They still considered the South the enemy. And then the Republicans passed the Tenure of Office Act, and this is, again, over a veto override. And what it does is it bars Johnson from removing, without Senate approval, any office holder who had been approved by the Senate. <clears throat> so Johnson responds by firing the Secretary of, St uh, of War. Sorry, William Stanton. Um, firing the Secretary of War. So that sets up the grounds for impeachment of Johnson. He is kept out of the Senate chamber by his lawyers uh, during the impeachment trial because they're afraid that he's going to lose his temper and wind up uh, making things worse for himself. They impeach him based on the fact that he violated the Tenure of Office Act. Um, he also, they impeach him based on the fact that he denounced Congress as unfit to legislate. But really, this is all about Reconstruction and Johnson's effort to hamstring the African-American progress that was being made in the South. His lawyers, on the other hand, sought to portray it as a partisan attack in the guise of legal proceedings. So the House voted to impeach 
126 to 47. You could call that overwhelming. One representative suggested that Johnson had actually been involved in the plot to kill Lincoln. That's not really true. Um, the chief of the Secret Service, too, gave false reports that Johnson had an affair with a woman looking for pardons for Confederates. Johnson's lawyers argue that it doesn't count since Johnson didn't appoint him. That is their argument. Johnson didn't appoint him. Lincoln appointed him, so therefore uh, the firing doesn't count. Uh, the Senate votes 35 to 19 to convict. 35 to 19 to convict. So that seems like, oh, that's a pretty big victory for Johnson, but it's really not because it's one short of what was needed to actually remove him. Seven Republicans had actually voted to uh, acquit. Effectively, this gets Johnson out of the way. Uh, it didn't get him out of office, but he is politically defeated at this point. And he then loses the Democratic nomination to Horatio Seymour, who then goes on to lose the general election in 1868 to uh, General Ulysses S. Grant. Johnson tries three times to run for the U.S. Senate in Tennessee, and he wins on the third attempt. Then he is welcomed back into the Senate with applause and roses on his desk like a uh, conquering hero. Then he uh, suffers a series of strokes after that and dies. So unfortunate end for Johnson, unfortunate end for Reconstruction as well. <laughs>